So, Mark, did you see those dancing grannies at the Link Promenade having fun, getting around? Of course, I don't think they were really grannies, but that's definitely how you do Vegas. What do you mean? You don't think they're really <laughs> grannies? They... <laughs> Looked like a bachelorette party or something. Looked like a lot of fun. I was I was kind of shocked at how dead the Link Promenade was, but I'm guessing it was really late at night. Just looked like a lot of fun. It made me think of uh, Vanderpump Rules when uh, all the guys like cross dressed in dresses and went to I think Nashville and uh, went around the town dressed like women, and it was just kind of hilarious. I don't know that I'd ever do it, but you know. Th- all the power to the people, I guess. I never had the thought of you doing it, but I think you'd make a great granny. There you go. I definitely could put some <laughs> junk in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark, uh, let's get into the show and let's start with TwitchCon 2023. They announced that they're going to move it to Las Vegas. We've talked so much about conventions like going away from Las Vegas, convention attendance not coming up. But on the flip side, we have all these experiences music festivals, and these other kind of new age conventions. Twitch, of course, a gaming streaming platform, huge platform among younger kids, and Vegas is going to be home to their big convention at least next year. Yeah, it seems like a big get for Vegas, and I don't know what kind of numbers there are, but I have to imagine it's pretty big, you know, eat from year to year. And what if they get, like, Comic-Con, the other big one, which I think is in San Diego, to come to Vegas, which I think would be a really good fit, and that'd be kind of crazy and, and another big get and... So that's kind of maybe the future, like moving away from industrial type of uh, conventions and more towards the younger age uh, media type of thing. Uh, Vegas is a perfect fit for it, for sure. As you say, uh, TwitchCon has been in San Diego, like Comic-Con, and uh, moving to Vegas. And I agree with you. I think that Las Vegas is moving into that experience direction, which is going to attract a lot more young people. And we've seen all the music festivals, all this stuff. This is sort of part of that even though it is a a convention. So it's going to be held October 20th through 22nd at the Las Vegas Convention Center. So at the main convention center, it shows you how big this event is. And it's deemed as an epic celebration of the streamers, games, chatters, mods, cosplayers, communities, and more that bring us all together. So uh, you're going to dress up as a... As an orc or something? Well, I don't know. <laughs> isn't, isn't that a big thing? Like uh, female gamers dress up as like the players they're playing and stream on Twitch and stuff. So I'm sure it'll be kind of like Comic-Con-esque of people in costumes and everything for the, the gamers and the games themselves. But I think it'll be a fun experience, something to check out. Yeah, for sure. All right, Mark. So one of the big questions people have is why does Nevada not have a lottery? And I don't think you have to look too uh, far to figure out why. Nevada doesn't have a lottery. In fact, it's in our constitution that we don't have a lottery. And that's mainly, I think, to make the casinos happy, especially nowadays. But one legislator, he's trying to do this. I think several people over the years have tried to do this, but he's proposing a law to get rid of the ban on lotteries, saying that, you know, billions of dollars a year could be going into uh, providing mental health funding for youth. And uh, that's a good point, because if you look at the numbers from other states, like Ohio, I think, takes in over like $1.6 billion a year from the lottery, something crazy like that. Uh, unfortunately, because it's a constitutional amendment, it would have to pass the legislature twice and then uh, go on the ballot for Nevada voters, who I think would approve it. So uh, hopefully this happens. Lotteries are controversial, but everybody's just driving to prim anyway and buying tickets. Yeah, I don't get really why the casinos are against this. I guess you can say like, hey, if they spend $10 on lottery, that's $10 less that they'll spend at the casino. But most of these are local people that would be buying the lottery tickets and they're already leaving the state to do it when it becomes a big draw. You know, we've done that video in the past of people lined up for hours just to buy lottery tickets across the border. So, you know, what are they fighting against here? It's not like the strip casinos are getting their money anyway, maybe the local casinos, but playing the lottery isn't the same as going to a casino and doing slots. I think people would do both. I don't think it's like they're going to take money from their casino money and, and then play the lottery with that. I think it's just they'll be spending more money on gambling. Maybe that's a bad thing. But, you know, I do like that they're they're aiming at mental health for children, and that's, of course, assuming that the money actually goes there when it, if it does ever happen, you know, you never know. Call me skeptical on that. Well, I think they could put it into the law so that the money is legally required to go where it has to go. Then they I... just change the law, Sean. That's what they <laughs> yeah, do. Well, that, that always could happen. <laughs> now, if this does happen in the soonest would be 2026 because of all the hurdles. And there have been over a dozen different attempts over the years to get rid of this law. So don't hold your breath. Although the casinos did say that they're willing to, you know, participate in a discussion about this. 
and uh, they're you know so we'll see how it all turns out. But don't hold your breath. But yeah, to your point, got, we're funding California, it. right? Yeah, yeah, true. And like California needs more tax money, they don't. <laughs> so, but, but uh, point number two: put lottery machines in the casinos. Allow them to sell it. Allow them to take a rake of it. If they have a winner, whatever they get their cut, whatever it normally works out to for these things. If you give them the chance to sell those, then I think it'd be fine. And that's you know something I see in Canada when you go over there. They have like a little lottery uh, spot to buy the regular tickets just outside the casino door. So. There's precedent, it can be done, and then that gets them on board. I don't know. That's, there we go. I've fixed all the problems of Vegas. Once again, Mark, <laughs> in, in five minutes, has fixed everything <laughs> that ails us here. Uh, let us know what you guys think about the lottery. Is it a good idea? Are we just wasting money sending it to other states, to Arizona, to California? Uh, so, yeah, let us know down in the comments. Mark, I wanted to do a quick Tillman Fertitta wealth update, specific around wind stock. We know Tillman Fertitta is planning to build a new casino on the South Strip on the corner of Harmon and Las Vegas Boulevard. He's consolidated some of the lots down there, and uh, we don't know how much that's going to cost. But back in October, we learned that he took the second largest stake in Wynn Resorts, 6.9 million shares. Uh, Elaine Wynn, the only larger shareholder of Wynn Resorts. When he bought that stock, it was $54.48 a share back on October 19th. What do you think it's worth now? Oh, man. Since we're doing the update, a double, I'm guessing, something like that? Almost exactly double. Uh, it's now worth $109.01, or as of right before we recorded the show, meaning that he made $376,257,000 since he bought the wind stock. Yeah, basically doubling his initial investment, a little bit more than doubling, actually. So a good down payment on that new casino. Why weren't we, like, just jumping in with this guy back when it went, <laughs> went down? I know we would have exactly. missed, like, the initial spike, but... There's got to be at least an extra 30 bucks that went up since we first talked about this, so we're dumb. Yeah, and that's why he has so many billions of dollars, and hopefully this is good news for his casino project. Uh, this will help him fund it or whatever, or the rich keep getting richer. But it, it's an interesting thing because wind stock has rebounded tremendously in just a, a few months, as have other casino stocks. Win is winning. There you go. <laughs> so Mark Meltzer shared on Twitter the odds of who's going to perform at the Las Vegas Super Bowl halftime show in a year. And, uh, of course, the Killers, the hometown favorite of Las Vegas, their odds are probably the worst because they're probably most favored to do it. I was surprised to see all the way on the other end of the list, Wayne Newton at plus 3,000. Um, I could see Wayne Newton not being a headliner, but I could certainly see them bringing him in. So I don't know what the rules of this bet are, but I would probably take Wayne Newton for a cameo. Yeah, I don't know the killers, you know, besides Mr. Brightside, where are they going to play for 20 minutes? I, I just don't think that they have the, the amount of songs to fill it. Maybe they come out for a spot thing. And it's always, you know, people think, Oh, local person, let's, they're going to get it. And it ne rarely ever works out that way. Like, we don't see a lot of local performers in their Super Bowl. So I was kind of surprised to see Beyonce on there since she's already done it. I don't think anybody, has anybody ever done it twice? Maybe as, I don't know, but maybe as like a backup, you know, supporting somebody else. Uh, you know, usually they have multiple performers, so I'm not sure. But there is one Vegas performer missing from this list of odds. The the, the magical man himself? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that he definitely deserves to be on the list and uh, doing something at halftime. Chris Angel plus one million. There you go. Put a dollar on it. <laughs> I mean, the totally worth that bet, right? I mean, some weirder things have happened. In yeah, the world. I, I mean, you never know. That would be great. What if... Whoever does the halftime show, if they saw that, they should just have him come out for some reason, just to have people pay out. Well, we'll, uh, we'll lobby to get it. You can't, unfortunately, bet on that in Las Vegas. I think those are overseas books that are holding those odds. But hopefully Wayne Newton gets some love, though, Mr. Las Vegas himself, even though his voice, I've heard, is not the best these days. Wayne Newton with uh, Elvis lookalikes on stage payout double. You can parlay it right there. It doesn't get more Vegas uh, than that. <laughs> so, Mark, I did get to go down to the new Wildfire Fremont and check it out. Your beloved IHOP uh, there and uh, the Taco Bell. Hope Zone you got a stack. Store. Did you get a big stack of <laughs> I didn't. pancakes while you there? <laughs> I didn't. I was too worried about getting shut down filming, so I was trying to be uh, careful there. Uh, not that there, I was doing anything that should be against the rules, but you never know when you're in such a small casino because Wildfire is their, like, micro casino, and so it's all kind of like one big room, has a center bar, which is really beautiful, TVs, a sports ticker on there. And the design language reminds me of some of their nicer properties like Red Rock, like Green Valley Ranch. So even though, you know, this is a smaller casino in downtown Las Vegas, it looks very, very nice. And uh, the Tacos El Pastor, more of a fast food place. IHOP is sort of their restaurant. A ton of machines, though, a few hundred machines in there. 
And like I said, that center bar looks like a cool place to hang out. It doesn't look like they were cheap on this. It looks like they built it pretty nice and it should be a good venue. I also liked that the shopping center that they built next door and the apartments behind there that are also on the showboat land are named after the showboat. So they give a little bit of love to the property that used to be there. Now, uh, size, you know, for us that aren't, haven't been there, what would you say compared to like Ellis Island, the size of the casino, is it bigger? It looks bigger from the, the walkthroughs I've seen, but what would you say, like, you know, twice as big as Ellis Island or, or what's your feel on that? No, I'd say it's probably about half the size of Ellis Island, maybe Oh, really? Oh, it's definitely smaller than <laughs> Ellis Island's casino. The, the casino in Ellis Island feels so tiny, and for some reason that felt more spacious to me on the videos, but I guess that just shows you video can be deceiving. Yeah, it's not that big. Um, there's a lot of employees there, too, and security and everything else. Uh, there was more, I'd say, employees there than there were customers, although I went like fairly early on Saturday morning, so it wasn't a busy uh, time at all. But no, it's not that big at all. The IHOP sits on one end, the tacos place on the other end. And then, you know, the bar in the middle and then machines, it's just a big open space. So it's not as uh, big as Ellis Island, kind of similar to other wildfire casinos for people who know around town. But yeah, it's really nice. This isn't an area you're going to walk to from the Fremont Street experience. But for locals, this is a great option to avoid the Boulder Strip and to have something nice and new, kind of a neighborhood vibe there. And like I said, the TVs, the bar, the whole setup is very modern, so you're going to get a, a good experience going there. So I really like it, and I think Station Casinos did a good job. All right, Mark, our big story of the week is Rio. In fact, a little uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, we recorded a whole segment about Rio in our last show, only to have the, the bombshell news about the ballpark rumor coming back. So let's start with this. They're saving Rio. the pillows. They're saving yeah. all the money on the pillows because they know they're going to sell. That's <laughs> Yeah, we, we saw this on Twitter where apparently uh, they run out of pillows quite often at Rio. You call down, they're like, no more pillows. Too many people are holding big parties there or getting, you know, six, seven, eight people to hang out in the suites. The rooms are pretty cheap. Caesar seems to have one step out the door. So we know something's happening with Rio. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, yeah, I mean, I can't believe Caesars has let it get to this point. Yeah, it's just a shame. It's something so simple and, you know, they're not sold out. So it's not like there's no pillows to be had, but to just tell people we're out of pillows, you can't get extra. And a lot of hotels or casinos will only give you like two or three pillows sometimes. And that's just not enough, especially with how thin they usually are. So it's kind of crazy and definitely shows that either they know something's coming or Caesars is like, hey, we're at the end of this. We don't really care, whatever. But, you know, those are players that you want to get to go to your other casino. So it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it seems like ever since that place reopened following COVID, knowing that Caesars was going to leave, it's just been completely neglected. And Dreamscape did, who is the new owners, did confirm this week that they will take management possession in 2023. So Caesars, even though they sold the property over three years ago, and I think they were their original contract was two years with a one-year extension, it seems like they're past that now. Uh, but whatever they've worked out, they haven't announced but Caesar's on the way out. Dreamscape just raised $850 million in capital in order to fund their operations, their real estate investment trust, all of their investments. Now, we had thought maybe this was going to be used for the redevelopment of the Rio because we hadn't heard a lot about its conversion into Hyatt and everything else. And it still may well be. But then the rumor came that the A's are seriously considering the Rio site as a ballpark site once again. And Dreamscape confirmed that, that they've been in conversations basically for years about this, uh, although they're seriously looking at it now. There are scenarios where you could build a ballpark on the back end of that land and still leave the Rio intact, which I think would be incredible for Dreamscape if they could keep the property with a hotel attached to the ballpark and everything else. So we don't quite know what's going to go on at Rio, but a ballpark is back in the mix and Rio uh, hopefully will get some sort of love, but will it be torn down? We don't know. Yeah. I mean, if I was them, I'd be like, here, take this land for free on the backside. Cause it's going to just add value to your property and then bring people in there in a way that it hasn't been in a long time. So it'd be cool to see. Now I went back and looked at like the renderings of the, the park in what they had pitched to do in Oakland. And that thing looks amazing. I, I, I'm for that one solely because it looks like the coolest ballpark option, but that was done back in like 2018. So it just seems like it's never going to happen. Vegas is now, you know, Oakland of the Southeast, I guess you could say if they take both the teams, <laughs> I don't know, but it'd be kind of crazy to steal the whole town's uh, sporting events. Um, 
But yeah, I think it'd be a good fit. That that makes a lot more sense than Tropicana for sure. Yeah, and the other sort of one that they're still publicly talking about is the Las Vegas Festival Grounds on Sahara and Las Vegas Boulevard. That's owned by Phil Ruffin, the same owner as Treasure Island and Circus Circus. Apparently, the rumor is that he kiboshed a deal to, to do it. So that deal is off the table, or at least that's the rumor. We saw rumors about the old Frontier site, Win West, but apparently that's back out. So there's still a lot going on. They want a couple hundred million dollars in public financing. We don't know if they'll get it. The governor, Lombardo, has said he doesn't support raising taxes for it. And I think the biggest issue is that if we do bring the athletics to Vegas, that we should change the name. They should become a Vegas team. I get why the Raiders stayed the Raiders because they have such a history and fandom. But the A's are drawing, what, a couple thousand people a game. We need to make that our own team. That needs to be a stipulation, I think. Come on, they have a history. Haven't you watched Moneyball? (laughs) That's the only (laughs) notable thing of the athletics, I think. Uh, Uh, All right. So here's how it's going to go. They're going to pass the the law to sell lottery, say it's for the kids, and then immediately amend it to pay for the land for the Oakland Athletics to come. There you go. That's how it'll work. There you go. Perfect. Uh, I think Dreamscape, you know, could hit the lottery here if they can get that place redone with a ballpark there. And there is a lot of parking on the back end. You know, they may have to take out their convention center. But I think they could keep the core of the property and still build this stadium. It does seem like that from satellites, from the amount of space that they have. They also do have several parking garages there. But, you know, who knows what the parking situation would be. This is a great location especially if they can build a pedestrian bridge over the the freeway, get people from the strip. It'll work similar to Allegiant, and I think it's a a great solution. And it could be the best possible thing for Rio. For those of us who love Rio and what it was, not only will it get rejuvenated, but people will have a reason to go over there. And, you know, there were some speculation that the reason Station Casinos bought Palms way back in the day was they thought that there would be a stadium here. Palms struggled for them. They didn't do well with it. So, you know, everything old is new again. And I don't know, this feels, the way that the timing and the way that this was released felt a little bit stronger than some of the other things we've heard. But again, that public financing is going to be the real the real kicker here. But if you're talking a couple hundred million, I, I think that's actually, you know, something you could discuss that maybe you'll actually recoup where Raiders, you're never getting that money back. That's kind of crazy. But maybe they're just doing it to kick off, you know, Vegas as a sports arena type of thing. I don't know. It's just, it's money. It's billionaires asking for handouts once again, just like we talked about with the NFL asking for, you know, volunteers. So it is what it is. They get what they want. Speaking of the Raiders real quick, on the next show, I'm going to talk about the practice facility. I got a tour their practice facility yesterday. This is the first time they've opened it up to season ticket holders or only suite holders, I guess, and club holders. So only their top season ticket holders and a friend invited me. So on the next show, I'll talk about all the the practice facility. I got to see the locker room, the practice field. It was a really cool experience. So stay tuned for the next show where we'll talk about that. In the meantime, let us know what you think about anything that we're talking about here, the baseball stadium at Rio, dancing grannies, the wildfire Fremont, and a lottery. Do you think it's time for Nevada to have a lottery? Leave a comment. And if you like the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you receive notifications of all of our videos. We do two videos a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. We'll be back in just a few days with another one. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. See you on Friday.